About six hours north of Toronto, off the coast of Lake Huron, you'll find a place many Canadians don't even know exists. It's the world's largest freshwater island. But even more spectacular is the special place nestled within. I get the goosebumps when I think of it. Yeah. Meet Shirley Hamilton. Manitoulin Island has been her mission field for years. Known for its natural beauty, it has captured many hearts. But it was the people and the stories that captured Shirley's. This is Monument Hill. And when I first came here, I would look at this cross on the monuments. And I was reminded of Jesus crying over the city of Jerusalem. And um, I would think of Jesus standing here on Monument Hill, doing the same for a wiki. My heart was broken. And uh, coming to Manitoulin Island in, in the summertime at first, um, and then having to go home after a week or two, and the tears would just start flowing. And um, I began to feel responsible you know, for these dear people I really came to love. You see, this island is also home to the Wakimakong Indian Unceded Reserve. Having never relinquished their land title to the Canadian government, Wiki, as it is affectionately called, is owned and operated by an Indigenous governing body. So when Shirley and her husband Richard arrived over 20 years ago, they were virtual strangers to the community. But they felt that sharing the love of Jesus with the Wiki people was what they were meant to do. But that would take some time. Outsiders had been here before, and scars were still healing. One of my dear friends here said, you know how we feel as Native people? You know when you go to a picnic and you have a paper plate, and when you're done with the hot dog and the baked beans and everything, what does your paper plate look like? And what do you do with it? You throw it in the garbage. That's what we feel like as Native people. But since I've come to Christ, I realize he wants me to be a fine china plate. And that makes all the difference in the world. Determined to spread that message of love, Shirley and Richard visited regularly, simply forming relationships, and eventually started running summer camps on a number of reserves, including Wiki. But after three years of ministry, Shirley's life was shattered when Richard lost his fight with cancer and passed away. Her loss was felt by the whole community, but it didn't stop her from reaching out to the people she loved on Manitoulin Island. And I continued on visiting the reserves, and I began to realize that God was bursting something in my spirit. And then I had this sense that I should write a letter to the chief at Wikwimakong and just um, state that, you know, we come one week in the summertime with a day camp, but is there any way we can come on a more permanent basis? and minister to the children. And to my surprise, he wrote back. Shirley was asked to attend a chief and council meeting. And by the end, they had voted to allow her to rent a building in town, a privilege rarely given to outsiders. Soon, she turned it into an outreach for the community she so loved, calling it Daystar. One of the uh, councillors said, you know, Daystar, that's like a Anishinaabek word, an Indian word. And that's like the morning star, the day star coming up from the east, and it's bringing us light and understanding. I thought, you've got it. That's all, what it's all about, you know, to bring that kind of light and hope to, to people who are indeed, you know. And that's exactly what it's become. And it's just a wonderful, safe haven for the people of the community. We run programming for all different ages, from little children through the elders and we have a clothing depot for the uh, reserve to access. And then we get very involved in the community as well. So it, it's really um, like a pioneer, frontline kind of organization in Native communities. A safe place for many of the kids who have nowhere to go after school, Daystar is a home away from home for many. The kids will burst into the front doors after school and say, hey, I'm home, Aww. you know? Or they'll come in and say, oh, this is a safe place, a happy place. Do you like it here? Do you like coming here? Yeah. What do you like about it? Mm, we learn about God and stuff. So if, if Daystar wasn't here, what would you end up doing? Where would you go? Um, I don't know. Go for a time that we're doing Daystar at home. That's what I do. With afternoons filled with games, activities, Bible stories, and a staff that loves them, the kids here are allowed to be just that, kids. 
and with that eagerness to learn more, staff are even seeing them come out to Sunday services with or without their parents. But the parents still send them here even though they know it's a Christian environment? Yep. A lot of the kids just come up on their own. Um, we have a number of kids too who on Sundays will just come. Every Sunday they'll come to Sunday school and their parents, they know that they're here and they don't really care to come out, but just to see like the eagerness in the kids to come out and to learn and they know what it's about. Like we don't hide that, you know, it's about God and you, you know, if you come here we're going to talk about Him. So which I think is even more incentive for a lot of them to come out. But as Daystar was getting off its okay. feet, Shirley's personal life there. was changing as well. It had been a number of years since Richard's death when she met Don Hamilton, a widower as well. They fell in love and eventually married. And then after years of reaching out to this community in the summer months, Don and Shirley decided this is where they needed to stay. That is one of the dangers. They moved to the neighboring community of Manitowanning. And now, for the last 10 years, they have worked tirelessly side by side. Shirley as the director of the outreach and Don as the pastor of their Sunday fellowship. We have a lot of social problems. There is violence and uh, addictions and th always the threat of suicide and um, uh, similar difficulties. And along with that, of course, are the spiritual problems that uh, erupt in a community like this. And as people are changed, society has changed. And uh, so we've just started, just made some very, very uh, beginning inroads in this entire process, but it started. And the work hasn't gone unnoticed. Well, from what I can gather that it's been a, a positive impact for sure where, um, you know, when it comes to a positive outlook in life, um, um, I guess just the idea of uh, um, self-esteem, self-confidence, and that they have, a, uh, they have a feeling of belonging, not only in our own community, but perhaps in their own individual homes. So and while course, both are in the second chapter of their lives, Don and Shirley have made a commitment to the people of Wiki to continue to be present and a part of the community no matter what. And for the past 10 years, that's what they've done together. I've discovered that it's not so important what I know as what, how I care and how I have time for people and um, how I'm prepared to get down and dirty with them or down to the level where they are and to share their afflictions and share their, their pain mm -hmm. and, to, um, and to somehow identify with that and then use whatever skills God has given to me and whatever experience I have to help lift them out of where they are. I do travel a lot. And some of those stories of where the Wiki people have been are both heartbreaking and full of hope. Like I'm very, very grateful that, you know, I know, like I found truth. Tomorrow, the people Shirley and Don have fallen in love with here in Wiki, how God has slowly transformed this beautiful place, and the deadly diagnosis that has brought this community even closer.